Foxconn, a crucial company for China, accounting for half of its electrical product exports and providing over 5 million jobs, is now facing pressures from the Chinese government. Chinese tax and land resourcing departments have initiated investigations into Foxconn regarding possible tax invasion and land hoarding practices. Why now? The underlying truth seems to be the Chinese Communist Party fiscal challenges and its insatiable greed for any potential revenue. However, suppressing Foxconn comes at a horrifying cost. On Monday, October 23rd, Foxconn's stock price hit its lower limit. A previously 300 billion yuan market cap company lost tens of billions of yuan in a single day. The question remains, did the founder of Foxconn, Terry Go, offend the CCP or is this just a facade? Even if it's a mere charade, such a costly act impacting millions of jobs and shrinking the stock market by hundreds of billions is too great a price to pay. Given the uncertainty witnessed by capital from Western countries, their large-scale exit is unsurprising. As China grapples with the potential for a full economic collapse, the government appears undeterred in its approach. A popular children's song succinctly captures President Xi Jinping's mindset. Whether the economy crashes or not, whether foreign investment withdraw or not, whether foreigners come or not, whether exchange rates explode or not, whether prices rise or not, whether the leaks, a metaphor for the common people, perish or not, whether dissenters curse or not, as long as our people live comfortably and stably, that's better than anything. Despite the departure of Western businesses, the Chinese Communist Party seem to have a plan in place. They believe that state-owned enterprises can bear the burden given that foreign investments have already laid the groundwork for the current Chinese economy. There has been a torrential outflow of global capital from China. Foreign Direct Investment, FDI, has plummeted from $120 billion US dollars in 2019 to a historic low of $41 billion US dollars in 2022 the lowest since 2010. The second quarter of this year saw FDI decline to its lowest recorded level since 1998, standing at a mere 4.9 billion US dollars. A third of US companies in China have opted to reduce or suspend their investments. Tech titan Apple has slashed its mainland China-based parts supply to account for just 2% of its total. Morgan Stanley issued a warning against buying Chinese stocks at lows. As interest rates are expected to rise by the year's end, redemptions are predicted to continue climbing. Most notably, BlackRock, the world's largest asset management firm, declared the closure of its operations in China, incurring losses exceeding 1.3 billion yuan. Morgan Stanley's analytical report revealed that the exodus of foreign portfolio investment, FPI, has been ongoing for three months. From August 7th to October 19th, a total of 22.1 billion US dollars flowed out of the Chinese stock market, causing the SSE composite index to drop below the critical 3,000 point threshold. Foreign funds are being withdrawn from China's stock market through the Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect, initially transferred to Hong Kong and then transferred out. On Monday, October 23rd, China's stock market fell below the vital 2,949 point threshold. Despite the People's Bank of China's net injection of 700 billion yuan for reverse repose on both Friday and Monday, the money injected into the stock market yielded no effect. Wall Street giants like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, who profited significantly from China, are now seemingly pessimistic about the country. It appears their current strategy aligns with anti-Xi forces in China, intending to short Xi Jinping, targeting China's real estate sector first, then the capital market. The massive withdrawal of foreign capital from China has deep-rooted causes that have shocked the West, reduced confidence in China's economic future and a consistent decline in the business environment are driving forces behind this exodus. However, at a deeper level, the current Chinese Communist Party regime is seen as a government that dares to do anything. Lacking economic rationality, constantly challenging global security, and unable to maintain its currency stability. Hong Kong, real estate, foreign investment, the military, everything once deemed untouchable, the Chinese Communist Party now dares to confront. 
When the U.S. decided to restrict investments in China's advanced tech sector, the CCP promptly adjusted its strategy by preventing U.S. investors from participating in the IPOs of its new stocks or other securities. However, the CCP's secret weapon seems to be the Middle East. Countries like Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Kuwait are swiftly channeling funds into China, particularly into sectors like artificial intelligence and semiconductors. To allure Middle Eastern capital, the CCP has introduced a series of preferential policies. Yet, when the might of the U.S. robust air defense system becomes evident in the Middle East, and as countries like Saudi Arabia witness the failure of Iran and terror groups backed by the China-Russia alliance, will they still trust the CCP? In the intricate web of international relations, China's actions seem to have no bounds. Despite Ukraine sharing aircraft carrier and engine technologies with China, the latter still supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Israel, risking tensions with the U.S., provided advanced military tech. Yet China did not hesitate to back Hamas in its attack against Israel. China facilitated the transportation of ammunition to Russia via North Korea, deeply entangling both China and Russia in Hamas conflict with Israel. In the South China Sea, video footage over the past 22 months has documented 50 interception incidents involving Allied forces. Such unrestrained actions underscores China's resolve, pushing global tensions to a fever pitch. Western nations are banding together, preparing for confrontation, as the world stands on the brink of potential war that could reshape global dynamics. Is it any wonder that there's a massive withdrawal of investments from China by Western entities? Unprecedented devaluation of yuan looms. In September 2023, China's economy was hit by an unprecedented dual deficit totaling a staggering 53.9 billion U.S. dollars. Amidst a financial storm, while the central bank grappled with stabilization efforts, the currency stability outlook appeared bleak, teetering on the edge of a significant devaluation. China's strategy seems to be centered around massive internal devaluation while maintaining a stable foreign exchange rate. They are gearing up to issue yuan bonds backed by gold and are simultaneously implementing domestic supply side policies, steadying domestic demand while exerting pressure internationally. Currently, China is rapidly selling off U.S. debts and purchasing substantial amounts of gold, sparking global speculation that the CCP might be secretly planning for a potential Taiwan Strait crisis. Should such a conflict erupt, U.S. assets in China could be seized, and gold bonds might serve as an economic anchor for the CCP. While this strategy might be a crisis management move for the CCP, it could spell disaster for Western investors who face significant financial losses if they do not withdraw in time. Challenges in the business environment, as the U.S. aggressively progresses with its rate hiking cycle, shooting its benchmark interest rate to a 22-year high of 5.5 percent, China's response has been to slash rates to counter its economic slump. This yawning interest rate gap not only paves the way for capital flight, but also makes the business environment for foreign investments in China increasingly challenging. Adding to the woes is President Xi Jinping's efforts to tighten economic controls and clamp down on foreign enterprises and executives in China, thereby deteriorating the operational environment for international businesses. Stern Hu, former head of Rio Tinto Group in China. Was arrested and sentenced to a decade in prison in 2009, possibly due to his opposition to selling key asset stakes to Aluminium Corporation of China Limited. Even having connections like Herring Kinzinger did not help. This year, a string of renowned foreign enterprises faced crackdowns in China, with their offices raided and executives detained. Among them were Mint Group's Beijing office in March, Bain and Co. Shanghai office in April, and multiple Capvision partners' offices in May. China's newly introduced anti-espionage legislation has seen 17 Japanese nationals branded as spies, with the legislation's vague definition of national security. Even trivialities can be labeled as espionage activities. In such a stringent environment, over 53% of Japanese enterprises operating in China express concerns about the law's implications, as revealed in a Nikkei report. September saw Charles Wang, Zhonghe, China Investment Banking Chairman at Nomura Securities, being ordered not to leave mainland China. In October, office of Group M, 
a subsidiary of WPP in Shanghai were searched with some executives detained. Mainland China is becoming increasingly inhospitable for many foreign executives, with close to 5,000 foreigners reportedly detained, many for politically motivated reasons. Some foreign executives are seemingly held as hostages and used in negotiations with Western countries. Moreover, foreigners living in China are confronting unprecedented surveillance pressure. While WeChat has become a one-stop service platform for life in China, it has also evolved into an optimal tool for government monitoring. This has prompted many foreigners to contemplate departing China, with surveys suggesting nearly half of the expats in Shanghai plan to leave within a year. Before 2019, several major Western brands in the tangible economy has essentially withdrawn from China. One of the primary reasons for the exit was the exorbitant cost of corruption and bribery, which reportedly couldn't constitute up to 10% of some of these companies' contracts in China. The scale of corruption in China is startling, with amounts involved varying from millions to hundreds of billions depending on the official's rank. On the business front, bribery and corruption have become a daily occurrence for foreign companies in China. Businessman Men Jing revealed how he was once compelled to pay hefty sums late at night for a provincial level official gambling pursuits and detailed how he hosted parties and government officials without charge. While foreign businessmen might not resort to such extreme measures, they too possibly face similar treatment. Current global investment giants in Europe and America are undergoing an unprecedented shift, increasingly perceiving China as a high-risk area rather than a top long-term investment destination. According to a recent report by the Associated Press, the confidence of European and American multinational companies in China has plummeted. A survey by the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China reveals that over two-thirds of the companies feel that doing business in China has become progressively challenging, a sentiment that was in the minority two decades ago. As the economic decoupling between the US and China accelerates, the US has halted its supply of advanced chips to China. This indicates that the golden era of foreign investment in China is drawing to a close, with a growing trend of capital withdrawal. Despite efforts by the Chinese government to stimulate capital flow and maintain stringent control over short selling and stock sell-offs, these measures appear superficial and do not address the underlying issues. Ironically, short-term stock market surges often follow the announcement of these favorable policies, prompting foreign investors to seize the opportunity to cash out. International investors are now primarily focused on quickly exiting the perceived black hole of the Chinese market. At the heart of the issue is that China's economic system has lost the trust of Western investors. The era of economic liberalization and opening up seems to be concluding, and a significant political economic commodity appears imminent. Short-term strategies are unlikely to alter this trajectory. The policy of economic liberalization and opening up was not just a personal ambition of Deng Xiaoping. Rooted in the global neoliberal wave of the 1970s, authoritarian states from Chile to South Korea, Taiwan and Singapore initiated market-oriented reform setting a global trend. However, every trend has its culmination. Countries like South Korea, Taiwan and Singapore, which were once authoritarian, has successfully transitioned from low-end manufacturing to high-end services and industries, and politically have moved towards democracy. China, however, seemed trapped at historical crossroads. Is it feasible for China to revert to its past era of right-wing autocracy? The answer is evident. Unlikely. Why? Because the current administration is swiftly ousting capital while conducting a massive purge of capitalists. Domestic capital is vanishing and international capital has lost faith in China completely. And what about the possibility of a left-wing dictatorship? Such hopes are misplaced. Throughout economic reform and opening up, the Chinese Communist Party allied with capitalists to suppress the working class, betraying the proletariat. This history reshaped China's social order, rendering the prospect of a left-wing government an unattainable dream. Today's China sees a Communist Party in conflict with every political fraction, a falling out with both the left and the right. This discord is an unparalleled achievement. China's present challenges extend beyond economic downturns, capital flight or investment losses. The deeper issue lies in the nation's inertia. 
Despite numerous opportunities, the country seems incapable of genuine transformation or advancement. History has shown that one shouldn't hold high expectations for leaders as they tend to be reactive rather than proactive in effecting changes. As the wheels of history continue to turn, the true storm, the real crisis, lies ahead, hinting at a potentially massive and tragic implosion.